Welcome to Knife Chats. If you like this video, please take a moment to leave a comment. Thank you. This is going to be a little bit of a departure from my usual videos. What I thought I'd do is share some of my knife collecting experiences. Now I've got a web page called A Pocket Guide to Knives that goes into more detail into this, but consider this one a uh, condensed version. I'm really going to focus on one thing that you hear a lot in this uh, knife collecting hobby, and that's the phrase, buy what you like. And well, that's more or less a kind of a, a no Sherlock kind of comment, because uh, why would you buy something you don't like? Well, the main reason a knife collector might buy a knife that they don't really like is because they think it might go up in value and they're going to make a killing off of it later. Trust me on this one, your waist size is more likely to double in the next 10 years than the value of any knife that you might purchase. This is especially true of any knife marketed as a collector's item, limited edition, or commemorative. The same is true for all those first production runs out there. These are terms knife makers use to sell knives, and often at a slightly inflated price over the same exact knife without the added glitter. And the only way these knives are going to retain any semblance of their value is to keep them all in the original packaging, the knife remains unused, you've stored it properly, and some other knife collector out there sees it 10 or 20 years later, and they actually still want it. In the meantime, that knife has become your little my precious, and you probably can't do anything with it, and you're really not having any fun with it. So... That's what people talk about when they say, buy a knife that you like. Now, if this is something you like to do, to buy a knife, throw it in a box, and hope that it goes up in value, then that's the type of knife collector you are. I'm not that kind of knife collector. And if you're booking on your knife collection to become your retirement plan, you're probably going to really hate your decision years later. You'll be much better off taking that money and throwing it into a 401k or some other kind of traditional retirement plan, or even just throwing it in a piggy bank, and uh, at least you'll still have that money when you retire, because you're going to be able to buy bread with that later, but you're not going to be able to buy as much bread once you start selling off your knife collection. You need to understand that the knife makers out there that are selling those knives, they're selling those knives to you so that they have money to put into their 401k. Now, if they thought that they could sell that knife for even more money, they would be selling it for more money. If they thought that they could hold off and just hang on to 15 or 20 of them and sell them at a much higher price later, they would be doing that already too. So think about that next time you're thinking of, I'm going to buy this knife and I'm going to hold on to it for 20 years or 30 years and then I'm going to sell it at a big profit. It probably will not keep up with inflation. If they thought they could make more money off of it, they would be selling it at a higher price to begin with. And that brings us to what my advice is. And my advice is real simple. You need to go out there and buy something that you're going to enjoy and that you can afford. And also, remember that one commandment about coveting. Do not go around coveting another knife collector's collection. All that will do is bring you pain and misery. Enjoy the collection you have and also enjoy other people's collections for what they are. So that brings us to how did I get involved with uh, collecting knives? Well, first of all, I've liked knives ever since I was a little kid. I even got a couple of knives from when I was a small child, and they're still in my collection. There's nothing special about them. But uh, about 15 or so years ago is probably when I finally started getting serious about collecting knives, and it's because I had some uh, disposable income, so it was possible to actually buy knives. And so my first thought was, uh, I'd really like to get some military fixed blades. I mean, I already had a Mark II fighting knife by Camillus uh, that I had used when I was in the Army. I already had a Spanish Mauser bayonet that I bought when I was about 16 years old for five bucks and thought, I, could, I should be able to get quite a few knives. Uh, and then uh, I went on eBay and started looking, and uh, suddenly 
the knives weren't five dollars anymore they were quite a bit more expensive and i realized i did not have the disposable income that i thought i had and i thought maybe i need to go in a different direction here it was also at this time that i realized i really didn't know squat about knives and i didn't know anything about collecting knives either and with that i decided it's time to start researching this hobby and also knives in general and find out a little bit about them and i did this in a couple ways first i had a satellite television so i had direct tv and there were two shows on tv at the time one of them knives live and the other one cutlery corner network everyone knows about cutlery corner network if you do anything with the knife hobby and while i wasn't buying knives from those shows i was watching the show and i was hearing a lot about the different knives and the different brands and started seeing how much certain brands cost and also kind of figuring out what knives are really cheap especially if you're going to sell a hundred of them for a hundred dollars you can bet that those hundred knives are not going to be worth a hundred dollars no matter what they say on television in any case i started learning that way and then i also went into the uh, various knife forums online and started uh you know asking questions and finding out that there's a lot of rude people on the knife forums because uh they really don't like to hear novice ask stupid questions and so i started lurking more and just listening and and reading old posts about different things to figure out more about it and then i started reading a lot of books and reading in the books really helped out a lot almost as much as i'm um, seeing the various different knives on the uh on the cable channels or i'm sorry the satellite channels like cutlery corner uh, seeing them show the knives and and looking at how they work and everything really helped me figure out a lot about knives especially traditional pattern knives and i started realizing there was a lot of traditional pattern pocket knives that i liked and about the same time i came across uh, an uh, ebay seller it's got KY in his name, uh, and he was selling all sorts of inexpensive knives, and they look kind of cool. Uh, and so I bought a couple of them. They weren't too expensive. They were in the eight to ten dollar range, and they were traditional pattern knives. They and uh, so I tried them out, and I kind of liked them. And then uh, you know I heard some nasty things about them uh, because they were made in China. They weren't made in the United States, even though the name sounded like something from the United States, but it helped me figure out if I liked the, the pattern or not. And uh, so I started buying a few more and started learning a little bit more about knives and everything. And that's how I started collecting knives. And um, early on, I thought, well, if I'm going to be trying all these different patterns, I should at least get something in that pattern to make it sort of cohesive. And at the time, there was a lot of white smooth bone knives out there. And it's like, that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to collect white smooth bone traditional pattern knives. And from there, I'll determine what knives I like and what knives I don't like. And that's how my white smooth bone collection started. And also early on, I ran across this knife uh, that had these cracked ice handles and it had a little cross on it. And it was called a Guardian Angel toothpick. And it was a five inch toothpick. And I seen these kind of knives before and always thought they looked cool so i went ahead and bought one and uh, it came and i really liked it and it's like well i gotta find this in white smooth bone and i couldn't find it in white smooth bone but i started seeing it in all sorts of other colors and everything so it's like all right well i'll just go ahead and collect large toothpicks too and so i started picking up large toothpicks and hence a second collection began white smooth bone knives large toothpicks now part of the reason i was collecting the white smooth bone knives was because i was testing out various patterns and one of the patterns i ran across was the uh, marlin spike knife and white smooth bone by rough rider and i really liked that knife and then i realized they offered it in other handle material so i said i'm going to buy all the uh, rough rider marlin spike knives and then i started seeing all sorts of other marlin spike knives and started buying those as well and so i started a collection of marlin spike knives but soon i pretty much got all the ones that i really wanted and then started seeing that the other ones out there um either i just wasn't that interested in them or they were way too expensive and uh out of my price range so that uh collection really slowed down and i started looking at other knives besides that and um 
all along while I was doing this, collecting my white smoothbone knives and my toothpicks and the Marlin Spike knives, I was also buying other knives over time. And uh, then one day I sat down and did an inventory of all the knives I had and realized that I had really collected quite a few Swiss Army knives and Scout knives during the uh, during all of this collecting that I was doing and realized that actually over half my collection was Swiss Army knives and Scout knives even though I thought I was focusing on white smooth bone knives and large toothpicks. But what I didn't count on is that for the majority of my adult life and even a good portion of my teenage life, I used to carry a pocket knife that was a Scout knife or a Swiss Army knife. And uh, I think that's why I was actually also picking up a bunch of Scout knives and Swiss Army knives. I'd see them, I'd like them, uh, and they were definitely within my price range. And so I started buying a lot of Scout knives and Swiss Army knives without even thinking about it. And before I knew it, half my collection was those kind of knives. And that's when I really realized what, that what I should be focusing on is what I really enjoy. And uh, while the other knives were kind of cool, it wasn't something that I tended to use all the time. Now, since then, because I do a lot of fishing and a large toothpick is basically a type of fish knife, I've also started collecting other types of fishing knives because I've got a ton of fishing gadgets anyway. So if you're going to fish and you like fishing and you like knives, why wouldn't you also collect fishing knives? So that's how my collection ended up evolving into primarily scout knives, Swiss Army knives, and uh, fishing knives. But because I really like testing all sorts of different knives, I still have that large collection of white smoothbone knives. And because I still have a fond spot for Marlin Spike knives, I still have them there. But I don't really focus on that as much. And finally, because I just like all sorts of different traditional pattern knives and the oddball knife that shows up now and then, uh, even if it's not in white smooth bone, I will still pick it up just because it's kind of cool and because there's some kind of history connected to it. And that's really where my collection goes. I'm looking at the history of knives. I'm not looking at anything that's going to make me a ton of money or anything. So for me, when it comes to a scout knife, that official Boy Scout knife has a very special spot in the history of that type of knife, but so does something like the Forest Master or the uh, Camp King or Camp Buddy or any of those other knives. And that's why I uh, look at so many different knives, including the economy brands. It's, it's not that they're just inexpensive, it's because they have a significant spot in the history of that type of knife. And because I know what it felt like when I was first starting out and people were treating me kind of poorly when I would ask stupid questions and stuff. I thought, well, I've got a website. Why don't I present information where people, that novice collector, can actually come to and actually look up information on pocket knives so that uh, they don't have to go through what I went through. And then I also thought, hey, it might be fun to do some YouTube videos on these things. and. Uh, Instead of like reviewing all these high-end knives and everything, uh, review the knives that you can actually afford and also talk about the history of these knives and also maybe make some videos that talk about specific traditional pattern knives so that if a person actually wants to know what a stockman is, you could actually tell them in a video and show them what it is. And uh, same thing with all these other traditional pattern knives out there. So basically the uh, knife collecting hobby has built into this idea of sharing information about the knives. And uh, in this way, I get to talk about my collection, but more importantly, I get to share it with other knife collectors out there and also connect with other knife collectors and see their collections. And by doing that, I actually get to live vicariously through other people's collections, learn a lot more about other knives that I would not normally pick up as they do not fit within my collection, but I get to share their joy in their collections. 
Remember when I said don't covet other people's collections? That's what I'm talking about. You can actually meet up with so many other knife people out there. Um, and then you can actually start enjoying the forums, enjoying uh, the various chat groups on uh, Facebook, and also the various knife collectors out there on YouTube who put out some really great information on knives, including the knives you don't like or, or don't collect yourself. And that's the joy of this whole knife collecting hobby for me. Uh, so uh, if you're into scout knives, or just can appreciate a scout knife, then this is a, a site where you can come to and I can talk to you plenty about various scout knives and fishing knives and stuff. But at the same time, if I want to find out something about like a Spyderco or a Zero Tolerance or something like out, that out there, I can go to somebody else's site and I can appreciate their information and talk to them about that and learn so much more about the knives. And that's the cool thing about this hobby. And that's what I really like about it. Uh, so that's also why I said, really enjoy what you're collecting but also buy the stuff you can afford because if you can afford it you can enjoy it more if you buy something you cannot afford chances are you'll end up regretting it later especially when you're not eating a steak but eating a peanut butter sandwich anyway that's where i'm at right now Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope that gives you an idea of my philosophy behind uh, my knife collection and also this channel itself. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you enjoyed this uh, episode of Knife Chats. And if you did, please like and share it with your friends. Comments are always welcome. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode of Knife Chats is up online. Thanks again. Hope to see you soon.